All right, in this lecture, we're going to review quadratic functions, um, and we're also going to talk about uh, let me peek ahead, polynomial functions. Um, so quadratics are a uh, are in the form f of x equals x squared. Um, and they're commonly, they commonly arise from uh, problems that are projectile motion, um, and they provide some interesting applications. So um, there are a couple different forms of quadratic functions. We have the standard form, the ax squared plus bx plus c, and we also have the vertex form. There's a little typo here. I should say vertex. And um, it's called vertex form because when it's in that form, it's really easy to pinpoint what the vertex is um, because the vo vertex is going to be h and k, um, where h and k are the numbers in the transformation of the function. Um, because the vertex appears in the transformation form, it's often called uh, the vertex form. Um, so we want to write an equation for the quadratics graph below um, as a transformation of f of x equals x squared. Um, so typically, you know, in regular x squared, your, your vertex is at 0, 0. This one has been gone down. <laughs> I hate it when it does that. All right, this one's gone down 3 and over to the left by 2. Um, so any left or right change is going to be in parentheses and since it's gone to the left it's actually uh, going to be plus so x plus 2 squared and the drop down will be the minus 3 all right and the next one our vertex has moved over to the right 4 and up 4. So remember any uh, change horizontally is put in parentheses and right chain when it goes to the right it's um, subtraction it's like the opposite of what you would think. And the up 4 would um, be plus 4 on the outside of those parentheses. So this is how we would um, write the functions of the transformed quadratic equation. And um, th this is, you know, also called vertex form because, you know, I can see the vertex from these h and k values. Um, just remember that it's minus h, so it would be negative 2, negative 3 is the vertex for that one. And the vertex for this one is positive 4, 4. It's going to be the opposite of whatever is in the parentheses there. And we can see that the vertex is, um, you know, positive 4, 4 right there. <coughs> we have the quadratic um, formula. So if we take the, if we have the quadratic um, equation given in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, then to find if we're asked to solve an equation, a quadratic equation, we can use the quadratic formula. Um, however, in class, we are going to put this, program this in our calculator. So we don't have to do it by hand. By hand. Um, In the next page, we're asked to solve um, some quadratic functions using our TI-8384 program. Um, so we haven't, you might not have that program in your calculator yet, um, but you will. If I just bring up the calculator here, it'll take a moment. Um, I may or may not have the program on it. But if I do, I wanted to show you, um, give you a peek of what it looks like. So if I hit my program button, see I don't have any programs right now. Um, but we are going to be programming it so when we look under there, we're going to have our quad function. So um, for now, 
we're going to skip those and we'll talk about those in class. All right, um, a person's systolic blood pressure, which is measured in millimeters of mercury, depends on a person's age. So we have an equation, P equals 0.004 Y squared minus 0.02 Y plus 120. Find the systolic pressure to the nearest tenth of a millimeter for a person that's 43. So all we're doing is plugging 43 into the to the um, function. So P of 43 is 0.004 times 43 squared minus 0 0.02 times 43 plus 120. So if we put that in our calculators, 0 0.0 I better put that first. 0 0.004 times 43 squared minus 0 0.02 times 43 plus 120. We get 126. 0.43, I think it said. No, 54. If a person's systolic pressure is 127.54 millimeters, what is their age? So we're trying to find uh, the age this time. So we're setting the function equal to one twenty seven point five four. Now to solve a quadratic equation you need to have one side equal to zero. So we're going to subtract that one twenty seven point five four from both sides and we get point zero zero four y squared minus zero point zero two y minus seven point five four equals zero. Now I know you don't have your pr calculator programmed yet, but if you had it, then you would just plug it in your program and you get that y is 45.99, which is, you know, 46 years. <coughs> 1.6 polynomials. So polynomials can be written in the form that I have here on the page. Um, so quadratics are polynomials, uh, linear equations are polynomials. Um, the ones that aren't polynomials are ones that are going to have a fractional exponent or a negative exponent or have any variables in the denominator. Um, also logs and exponential functions are not polynomials. Um, so each of the AI constants are coefficients. And a term of a polynomial is any one piece of the sum, um, so each ai x to the i, and uh, the degree of the polynomial is the highest power of the variable that occurs in the polynomial. Um, so if the highest power is 4, then it's degree 4. Uh, the leading term is the term with the highest power. We usually list them in descending order, so it's the highest to the lowest. And then leading coefficient is a coefficient of the leading term. Um, so in 5 plus 2x squared minus 4x cubed, the, um, the degree is going to be 3 because the highest exponent is 3. The leading term, I'm going to call it LT, is negative 4x cubed because that's the one that has um, the highest exponent. And the leading coefficient then, I'm going to call that LC, the leading coefficient is negative 4. Um, an example of a polynomial, f of t equals t minus 5, t plus 4, and uh, t minus 2. So if we want the f-intercept, that's when we set t equal to 0. Um, so we have f of 0 
is equal to 0 minus 5, 0 plus 4, 0 minus 2. So that's negative 5 times 4 times negative 2. So that's going to be positive 40 for the f-intercept. For the t-intercept, you're going to set f of t equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to t minus 5 times t plus 4 times t minus 2. And because it's written out this way, it's really easy. We can just take this piece, set it equal to 0, and solve, and we get t equals 5, t equals negative 4, and t equals 2. Um, to list them properly, though, um, it should be 5, 0, comma, negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. So the f-intercept 40, uh, that's 0, 40. Um, because intercepts are, they're, they're ordered pairs, they're points. Sometimes we get lazy and we just name the number. Um, but you might find in my open math that they want you to list coordinates. So just want to make sure you're used to that. Use your graphing calculator to solve this equation um, graphically. I want to show you how to do that. So you want to grab your uh, graphing calculator. And uh, I'm just going to clear out everything that's here. I'm going to go to y equals. And I'm going to put in the, the function that we're trying to um, solve. So it's uh, x cubed. And uh, to get out of the exponent mode, you can just hit the right arrow if, that's the, if your calculator is doing that. Minus 7x squared. Oops. <laughs> I need to delete that. I need to put an x in here and then a squared. All right, there we go. I got stuck in the exponent mode there. Um, plus 3x plus 35. And then we're going to graph it. And uh, let me see if I can possibly get um, a better view for you guys. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> we can see that there are three places where and I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing or not, but there's three places where the graph is crossing the x-axis, and that's where it's going to equal zero. So we need to find those points, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to hit second, um, trace. That's your calculate menu, and we're trying to find the zero, so we're going to hit number two, and we're going to have to do this three times because there are three zeros. So I'm going to use my... Um, my arrow pad, my left and right arrows, that's how you move along. And um, we're I'm going to try to do the leftmost point. I just went pot past it. So left, it's asking me left bound here. Um, so I'm, I'm at about negative 1.96. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter because that's left of my zero. And then I'm going to get a little right to it of it. And um, hit enter and then just hit enter again and it's telling me that my zero is negative 
So we have to repeat this again. Second trace, two for zero. And now I'm gonna right arrow over to get close to the second zero. Should be there soon. Can't see the cursor because it's off screen right now, but it should be appearing right about now, yeah. All right, so left bound, we wanna be a little bit left of our zero, so this'll work. And then we wanna be a little bit right of it. And you gotta make sure that your signs are changing. Um, when I did left, my Y was positive. When I do right, my Y is negative. And if your Y's don't change sign, it's gonna give you an error. All right, so for this one, we get 3.83 approximately. And we'll do the last one, second trace. And uh, I wanna be a little bit left again, and this time my Y is gonna be zero. So I'm gonna hit enter right here at about 4.8. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. I think I lost my, uh, my zero mode. That's okay, we'll just do it again. Second trace two. Left bound, that looks good. And this, for my second point, my need, Y needs to be positive, so about at about X equals uh, 5.15. And then I just hit enter for the guess, because it doesn't matter really what you put in for the guess. Um, and my, so my third zero is five. So our zeros here, or the answer to this equation, were negative 1.83. 3.83 and 5. Now you might be thinking, well, how many um, decimals should you have? Uh, usually two is enough. Sometimes you need to have three. My open math will usually specify how many that it needs. If it doesn't, then um, two is usually good. All right, polynomial inequalities. Um, now these, we're not exactly going to be using these later on. Um, but some of the steps that you use to solve polynomial inequalities we're going to be using. So I want to go over it. Um, if we look at this one, our zeros are at x equals 3 and x equals 2. Right? So we're going to plot those on a number line in order. And we're going to pick a point before um, 2, in between 2 and 3, and after 3. Oh, shoot, it's not going to let me do that. I waited too long. Alright, I'll start over. It's uh, very particular. If I pause for a moment, then I have to kind of start over. Alright, and then you're going to um, pick whatever you want for those points to be, uh, but they have to, you know, make sense. They have to be in those intervals. So these are your test points, our 0, 2.5, and 4 are my test points. And those points you can pick whatever you want to be as long as they make sense for the interval. Then you plug them back into the inequality. So 0 minus 3, 0 minus 2 squared. And you ask, is that larger than 0? Well, this is negative, this is positive, so no. This interval is not going to work. Um, the 2.5 is going to be the same problem because we're going to get a negative times a positive. Oops, 2.5, that should have been. Let's start over. So that one's a big no. Oops. Should have been. All right, third time's a charm. I'm trying to rush through it, I guess. There we go. I think I got it all this time. So, big no. And the last one, um, four is going to work because we're going to get a positive times a positive, and that is indeed greater than zero. So we cross out the second interval, the fourth one works, so in that interval is the interval from 3 to infinity. Um, so that is the answer for this inequality. 
so we'll try the second one. I would take a moment and try it on your own first. Um, but our zeros are negative three and four, so I wanna plot those on my number line. And I'm gonna choose negative four, uh, zero, and five for my test points. Plugging them in, we get negative four plus three times negative four minus four. And this time we wanna know is it less than or equal to zero? Well, it's negative one times a negative eight, that's actually positive, so no. So that interval, again, isn't gonna work. Um, let's try zero, zero plus three times zero minus four. Is that less than or equal to zero? Positive times a negative, yes. So this interval works. And we'll try the last one. That's positive times a positive. That is not going to be less than or equal to zero. So the only interval that works is the center one, and uh, we want to include those endpoints because um, <coughs> it's a less than or equal to. So the answer to this one is negative bracket negative three comma four bracket.